Okay, well, I think this is the first time we've spoken to you since you've become leader of the Greens. So firstly, just to congratulations on becoming leader. Thanks um, very much. As I'm sure you're aware, the COVID-19 issue has just had an overwhelming impact on social and political life at the moment, so I'd like to start there. Um, how would you characterise the government's handling of this um, COVID-19 response? Uh, they um, a bit too late and a bit too focused on putting business before people. The um, uh, government should have acted from a much earlier stage when the threat um, became apparent. But um, it's the the government's economic response that is also telling. Um, they were very quick to shovel billions of dollars out the door to assist um, large corporations to stay afloat, but there were no strings attached to it. And, and as a result, we saw uh, uh, images of, um, or depression era images of doll queues snaking around the corner. That could have been potentially avoided if they'd listened to the Greens in Parliament and um, made the support to business conditional on jobs and wages guarantees. Um, it was a mistake to hand out billions without any strings attached. Uh, and um, it's no surprise that businesses started sacking people um, uh, on day one. Uh, the um, the package should have had um, uh, should have had a jobs and wages focus. The government is now um, playing catch up and is trying to unscramble the egg and has come um, has delivered some form of jobs and wages guarantees, the, which the um, uh, uh, close to what the Greens have been pushing for. Um, worryingly, that doesn't cover people who are um, uh, casuals who are employed for less than 12 months, which is close to a million people in this country, they're going to be the ones most at threat from um, uh, pr probably on the lowest incomes, um, ones in the most difficult situation uh, when it comes to paying for the essentials. And uh, they um, will be trying to close that particular loophole. Um, the government's first response also left a number of people behind. It didn't extend the increased um, new start payment to students. We managed the Greens managed to get that fixed by pressure and um, with pressure together working with the community. But there's uh, we managed to get um, a, a ban on uh, evictions, uh, which is um, which is very welcome. But people on disability support pensions still don't get the extra payment. Carers don't get the extra payment. We need to have. Uh, I mean, everyone should be entitled to a. Uh, a, a decent income and especially during a time of crisis um, so we're going to keep pushing for the government to extend its um, double new start payment um, to to everyone to make sure that there's no one left behind um, on the public health front the i think new zealand uh, has taken a better approach than australia i think the um, the government's reluctance to act quickly uh, uh, stemmed in part from their desire to just continue business as usual and it took them a little while to realise the scale of the problem and that um, uh, uh, the government's first instinct wasn't to put human life above business as usual and uh, as a result they're a, a bit slow um, uh, to, to, um, to get going on a public health response. Yes, okay. Um, what would you see then as the priority measures to be adopted uh, right, right, right now. Um, it, firstly, ensuring no one is left behind, and that means uh, making sure every group in society has access to a guaranteed income through this crisis. Um, may, uh, not only banning evictions and foreclosures, but also making sure that rent and mortgage holidays are given um, where they're needed, so that we don't find ourselves in six months uh, with people having huge debts and. Um, uh, being in significant stress at that point. Uh, the, um, we need a significant expansion of our public health care system. The, the, um, one of the things that's going to get us through this is a strong public health system, something that governments have attacked over um, many years and decades. That's going to be our a significant front line of defence. We need to significantly expand our public health system and 
the equipment in it. Uh, I'm worried that we don't have enough ventilators and intensive care beds, for example, and we need to expand that. Um, and if, uh, uh, if we need to have a look at um, uh, expand, uh, saying the private sector um, now has to be subsumed in the healthcare sector, has to be subsumed to the public good, um, then that's something that we should look at too. Yep. Actually, I was going to ask about exactly that because, I mean, this crisis, I think, as in other crises in the past, has revealed the inadequacy of the private sector in dealing with crisis. Uh, I guess in particular, you notice the public hospitals sacking nursing staff. I mean, there's other examples from overseas of companies trying to impose pay- patents and such like and, and not really looking after people in those, in those sort of contexts. Many people, I think, have drawn anti-capitalist conclusions from this experience, or even if not that far, at least are more open to ideas such as nationalising private hospitals or bringing Qantas back into public ownership. Do you have any comments about that? Yeah, the things that are going to get us through this crisis are all the things that neoliberals spent 30 or 40 years telling us were impossible. Um, putting uh, human need above a budget surplus, um, having a strong public health care system, having governments that act uh, on independent advice in the interests of the public good rather than in the vested interest. Uh, or it's, it, it is the um, public sector and um, a, a human-centred approach to economics that is going to get us through this crisis. The, um, um, so, and um, conversely, it's been the attacks, the, the government attacks on the um, public health care system, attacks on public housing um, that have left so many people vulnerable to this crisis. We have a homelessness and housing crisis in um, a very wealthy country and the government is advising everyone to stay at home, but what if you haven't got a home to stay in? And um, we've got hundreds of thousands of people on the public housing waiting lists across the country after governments of both persuasions have spent years underfunding them. And now we're finding that it's exactly public services like that that are going to get us through. So um, the uh, what one of the things that the response to the crisis brings home is that it's actually... Um, uh, uh, public uh, services and public institutions acting in the public interest, not invested interests, that are the, uh, the where we turn to in a crisis. So um, uh, that has been. Um, uh, uh, it's not necessarily a lesson that the neoliberals uh, are wanting to draw from this crisis and. Um, we're, we're all going to have to be prepared for um, when in a few months or a year's time they um, they start to complain that now the cupboard is bare and they've got to wind back the job seeker payments and they can no longer continue to support people who are doing it tough. We're going to have to be prepared for a fight um, to make sure that we don't go back to uh, 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 having a, uh, such an unequal society. Um, but the, um, if there's one thing that the response to this crisis has shown, it's the, um, the importance of the public um, ahead of the private. Um, on, the, on the question of um, uh, 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 government sort of bailing out of corporations, um, I think the government should look at taking ownership stakes in some of these big corporations that we're being asked to bail out. There's... Um, I think uh, the, if these, um, if the if the if the public is going to be exposed uh, to um, to the risk associated with these big corporations and is going to assist them to continue to operate through the crisis, then I think it is fair um, to ask for an ownership stake in return where appropriate, um, and in many instances. Uh, especially when we're dealing with essential services, I think a lot of people would think that's quite a sensible thing to do. So I wanted to turn to climate change. Um, Obviously, before COVID-19 began to dominate public attention, uh, the bushfire crisis, which it feels like so long ago, but really highlighted the absolute urgency of dealing with the climate crisis, uh, yet Labor and the LNP both remain committed to miserable or even non-existent climate policies. Um, at the risk of being asked of accusing a Dorothy Dixer, can you just comment on Labor's net zero by 2050 policy? Well, there's every chance that by 2050 it'll be too late. The science is pretty clear that it's what we do in the next decade that is going to count the most. And um, we need very, very strong cuts to pollution in 
uh, before 2030. Otherwise, we may pass dangerous tipping points after which global warming becomes unstoppable. Um, and uh, the, uh, and if um, all of the uh, if all that governments and oppositions can do is say, well, we'll take some action by 2050, then uh, then in the absence of strong 2030 targets, that's a death sentence. It's mm. a death sentence, and it. Um, uh, so we are very disappointed that we, the, the government's um, uh, 2030 target is woefully inadequ inadequate and has us on track for between three and four degrees of global warming. And so the government's got to go. Like the government is government of climate deniers and corporate shields, and they've got to go. But um, Labor, by dropping its 2030 target, has taken the pressure off Scott Morrison and um, is contributing to the idea that we can wait several decades when in fact it's an emergency. So so what targets and also what policies uh, to achieve those targets do the Greens support? Well, we need to get to uh, zero emissions uh, by 2040 at the absolute latest with the bulk of the work being done by 2030. The electricity sector should be 100% renewable by 2030 with a staged transition plan to um, uh, replace coal with renewable energy over the next 10 years, looking after affected workers and communities along the way. Um, the whole economy needs to be, uh, the whole society rather, needs to be looking at pollution cuts um, uh, between by 2030 closer uh, to 82 percent rather than um, what's been the 26 percent that's being proposed by the government at the moment um, and our targets are for 64 to 82 percent by 2030 and um, that's the kind of like we need as, as much as possible to be zero emissions um, in as many sectors as we can by 2030 with the remainder of the work being done by 2040. And uh, you have made support for a Green New Deal, a centrepiece policy for the Greens upon becoming leader. So I guess I want to ask, what do you think a Green New Deal should look like? And do you envisage the Green New Deal as an exclusively Greens policy, or is it a project you would consider working with other people to develop and campaign for? In which case, what would that collaboration look like? I think the, the vision of a Green New Deal is um, a government-led plan of investment and action so that investment and action to um, uh, uh, create new jobs and industries as we make Australia more equal. And so the, the, the twin underpinnings of it are a public-led program of investment to tackle the climate crisis and the inequality crisis and the jobs crisis that that Australia is facing. Um, and the second pillar of it is universal services. So. Um, making sure that we are all looked after and that no one is left behind. So making education genuinely free, looking at free childcare, um, making the understanding that, you know, that we're a wealthy country and that um, we, uh, and that universal services are something that's, that's um, core to what uh, uh, most people in this country um, uh, think is, is key to a good life. Uh, in terms of, uh, and my goals are to, um, turf the government out, uh, get Greens into balance of power in both Houses of Parliament and then implement a Green New Deal. And so that will involve working with other parties and independents to make that happen. Um, in 2010, the Greens worked with Labor and independents to put in place a carbon price, get dental into Medicare for kids um, and bring about a number of other reforms. Uh, I think that, that um, we're not that far away from um, that outcome in Parliament again. It's a very tight Parliament still. Uh, and um, if we do our job right in the next election, we could see a change of government, um, but a shared power Parliament. And so, yes, we will work with others to implement it. I've already had discussions with um, unions about what uh, fighting for a Green New Deal would look like, even had discussions with business as well, uh, sectors of business as well. And um, the, it's going to involve um, people working together across uh, across society to make it happen. Um, we will promote it, but look, you know, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And if other parties want to pick it up and make it their own, we'll be very happy about that too. And do you have any other comments on priorities for the Greens under your leadership? I think we've got a terrible government, and um, we want to hold the government 
um, well, we want to turf the government out, and uh, they're a government of climate deniers who uh, are making inequality worse in Australia. So for me, I mean, my priorities are to get Australia to tackle the climate emergency, to tackle the inequality emergency, and to tackle the jobs emergency, one, uh, job, jobs crisis rather. One of the um, things that I'll that I'll be talking a lot about during the course of my leadership is um, the importance of of decent jobs with good conditions and lifting the minimum wage, lifting rates of pay in Australia at the moment, but also tackling job insecurity. Uh, it's especially the case amongst young people. We've got I mean, before the coronavirus crisis hit, we had um, uh, nearly one in three young people in Australia either doesn't have enough work or doesn't have a job at all. Now, I think that's a national crisis. The, the casualisation and, in, and um, the increasing insecurity uh, of work is, um, is has reached crisis point and it needs to be reined in. Like I said, say more broadly in terms of a focus for me, I think people in this country are feeling very anxious and part of the reason that people are feeling anxious isn't just the climate crisis and it's not just um, the threat of um, of coronavirus it's because over the last three to four decades governments have um, uh, made a lot of the basics of life um, very uncertain and no longer guaranteed so uh, you're no longer guaranteed a, um, a roof over your head you're no longer guaranteed even if you um, find yourself lucky to get a job you can still find yourself living in poverty um, part of government's role should be to guarantee the basics of life for people and um, so I'll be fighting uh, uh, a lot on the uh, on the jobs front on the housing front and on making sure that um, the basics of life are guaranteed and that they're treated as essential public services okay thank you very much for your time good on you thank you